Take it off. Take it off. Hey, good morning. So, on the cameras, I noticed that uh, our little bull driller heifer calf got herself out again. You're not supposed to be in here. You're supposed to be with your mom. Take it all. Take it all. Yeah, she liked it outside though. She's running around. She's running, playing. She's definitely having a good time. And I'll have to run water this morning too. Not too worried about the calf and the temperature drop. She got such a nice start and she had a full day before it really started getting cold out. Uh, like this morning, I mean, it is yesterday morning and this morning it is pretty close to zero uh, Fahrenheit. We do have jackets for them, but like I said, she had such a great start, got her meal into her, they're inside, there's no wind and they're in good bedding and stuff, not overly concerned about uh, temperature. And Barb is still, she is slow but sure, she is coming along. I know I said she'd be the first one, but again, we only knew when the bull went in, we did not know when she got bred. <clears throat> but I've said too that it looks like she is right in pace with the rest of them, which is nice. We wanna calve our heifers like, we like to do them like three to four weeks prior to the cows, at least the majority of the cows. Heifers tend to take like another 21 days longer, 21, 30 days longer to come back into heat for their after they calve. Hey, Cora. So like a regular cow after she calves, typically it's like 60 days for them to come back into heat after they calve. Uh, it's like 60, 90 days. And a heifer is like sometimes 90 to 100 days. So if you calve them out a little bit earlier, then when they cycle, they're cycling when the cows are cycling. So if you can hear in the background, I got the air compressor running. All right, so it looks a little goofy, but I've got this in the, our die grinder, our air tool, and we're gonna try this out in here. So I tried it a little bit the other day, trying to grind that, uh, that weld seam down a little bit. Uh, just so that these pipes hopefully flow back and forth a little bit, a little bit nicer. I don't know how well this is going to work, but I wanted the air tool because it's got a little higher RPM. So let's give it a whirl. Oh, what's going on here? Here, we'll check the air supply. Stupid breaker blew again. Look how far off. Well, I still think that top needs to get shaved down too, because you're binding on the top. Ouch. Where are we going? Outside, away from the corn stalks. Roger that. So, putting the head catch in place, not bad. Turned out pretty nice, I think. The issue we're having is the adjustability on it. This is supposed to slide inside of this. I got those grinding bits, those sanding wheels to try and take this little flash off right here, this little weld seam off the pipe uh, because we thought, okay, that's probably a 16th of an inch, not helping with the binding. And wherever that weld seam was, we actually, I got some of it out, but dad actually came in and ground a groove in here. That's why this is all, and then we sanded this all down to get some of the rust and stuff off of there. As soon as you push on it, if you push on it too much up here, it binds. You push on it too much down here, it binds. So it is turning into a fun, fun project. Um, one way or another, we're going to get it to work. That will be continued tomorrow.
so we got everything fed. Uh, yeah, it actually turned out to be a pretty nice day. So you saw us grinding and welding on our brand new head catch uh, part, but what we discovered when you measure it, like center to center, this part compared to the part that slides into it, they're about an eighth to a quarter inch off. We measured it like three, four different times, a couple different ways, and it pretty much is a almost a quarter of, quarter of an inch off. So it binds like automatically, like you try and push it in and it binds. Dad just said, screw it, I'm cutting it off. I don't care, I'm gonna cut it off. It's not gonna be worse than it already is. Right now, it doesn't work. It doesn't adjust the way it's supposed to adjust. But we think we have it pretty decent. We actually slid it in there, mocked it up. Uh, Dad tacked it in place and we measured it up and it's pretty darn close to what we think it should be. Dad will probably weld that up. Welding is dad's forte, uh, but that is something I, I definitely want to learn and get better at. Hey, good morning. It is Monday morning. Wait, Monday morning, I'm home. Yeah, apparently I have President's Day off. I don't know. So this morning we ran to the feed mill. Uh, the calves, steers and heifers have been without their lick tub for like a week. They ran out, so we went and got them another one of those. We didn't have any of just the plain protein tubs. So we took a little bit of a lunch break after dad got that welded up. So we just put a bale of stalks downstairs. Dad's gonna go poke around on the yard out there to see if it's gonna be good enough to do uh, hauling tomorrow. And I'm gonna unroll that stock bale. So I actually have the bale set up so that it, you know, you know, round bales will obviously roll up and then there's a real easy way for them to unroll. But what I'm actually doing is I'm gonna roll it down the barn the way that's not friendly to unroll it so that I can have less come off up there and then have more left down on the end. Just a little bit of a, you know, something we do once in a while is kind of a trick so that for that same reason, if you want more hay or more uh, bedding in one spot on one end of the barn versus the other. We'll turn it around and pull it off by hand a little more But we'll see because these bales are actually shredded up pretty decent So it might just all fall apart but We're gonna set you up right here ish somewhere and hopefully the cow doesn't knock you down Come on
yeah, that's pretty much how we spread out corn stalks in our barn. Sometimes a little bit more effort involved than we'd like, but corn stalks are pretty easy, especially when they're um, shredded really nice and they're dry. The only thing I had to deal with was a little bit of frozen shell, uh, but hopefully if we ever get a net wrap baler, that'll help with that. So it's not too bad. All right, so we are going to throw a stock bale in the bullpen. So I thought I'd wrap up the day just a little bit, kind of show you where we're at. Um, so you saw us putzing around with our head catch. Uh, but we got the two sides in. So again, this side is, you kind of set it and forget it kind of thing. We've got set screws. So you kind of set it where you want it. And then this is the side that is kind of forgiving or supposed to be a little more adjustable but it definitely works a lot nicer now. So once I pull this out, now this actually will actuate a little bit. The bottom won't only because we have it in all the way uh, and it's there's just no more travel left in it, but at least the top is set and we think that's gonna be good Like this, this width here for um, where the cow's head's going to be is actually like an inch, maybe an inch wider than the cow stanchion. So I guess we'll just have to see if that's too wide, not wide enough, uh, that kind of thing. Don't really think it can get much wider, but if we try it out and it needs to be uh, squish together a little bit. That's easy. That we can do. No problem. There's another, there's another setting for that, that we can do, but we think we now have this functional. Um, we also took, we wanted the out to swing the head catch this way to like release an animal and also to help catch them. We wanted it to be on this side so that if you're if you're gonna be here, plus having the handle over here, if you're bringing a cow in this way, then you're probably gonna be standing somewhere in this location anyways to help close this or uh, trip it or something like that. But what was kind of dumb is they've got a hole here for when it's mounted on this side, and then they have a separate hole like right here to mount it on this side but it wouldn't work. Like it, it's not really universal. And I think part of the reason is, is that if you look at it, this handle isn't in the center of this bushing. So it's not reversible. So we don't know if that is done on purpose or if that's just not the way it's supposed to be made. Not sure. Um, but we definitely think that uh, we definitely think uh, this issue here that we discovered, this being off, that was definitely a structural or construction issue from the manufacturer. Because now it actually works. It actually seems like it's functional. So we'll just wait and see and try it out. Worst comes to worst, we go right back over to the old head catch and try that but this should work we were pretty confident we kind of adjusted the trip and stuff like that so we think it'll work we'll just have to give her a try and see what happens but that project hopefully is done we also mentioned or noted to each other that uh, we've been working on it for like two weeks in the afternoon so that one is good to be done well plus we've been hauling manure which dad is going to start doing again tomorrow uh, he's probably actually going to haul off the pile, but uh, 
cows have the full length of this pen now. Uh, I put that silver gate back on. Cow and calf are in the back. Um, heifers and steers have their lick tub. Bulls have their lick tub. Everybody's happy. All is right with the world. At least on, at Mormon Simmental's for the afternoon. Anyways. See what tomorrow brings. But you guys have a great rest of your day. We'll catch you tomorrow.